Quick is different from other web frameworks. There's a lot to learn. In this video, we will cover the basics, which will quickly get you running. Some of the concepts in Quick may be new to you. We will roughly cover the 20% of the Pareto principle that give you 80% of the knowledge that you need to get up and running. So, which topics are the most relevant for learning quick? There are seven topics that I recommend learning first when getting started with quick. Those are project setup, quick and quick city, resumability, routing and layouts, state management, components, and tasks. After you have gained a basic understanding of those topics, you can dive in deeper as you advance in your project. By the way, to always have a bird's eye view of Quick at hand when digging deeper into Quick, you can download my Quick Sheet Sheet for free. Link in the description below. So let's cover our first topic, the project setup. We can use Node or Bun to develop our app. We will use Bun as package manager and runtime. We can easily get started by running the command bun create quick. When running this command, we are asked which kind of project we want to generate. For your first project, let's just pick the pre-selected recommended basic app. This starter project will contain some demo routes and components. Playing around with those is a great opportunity for you to explore how a quick app is structured. You can now start a development server with the bun start command. This starts a vdev server and opens your app in your favorite browser. When you are ready to deploy your app, you can configure quick for a deployment target of your choice. You can build your own deployment, but quick already comes with some common deployments. Let's go with the bun deployment for now. The bun deployment can be configured via bun quick at bun. This will create an entry.bun.ts file, which will start a bun server with a quick city middleware. Now you can build your app with the command bun run build. And launching the app in preview mode can be done via bun serve. The build app consists out of the directories server and dist. You can copy those to your target environment, for example docker image, and run your app in production with the command bun server slash entry.bun.js. This completes the first topic, our project setup. Let's now get to the part quick and quick city. Quick consists out of two parts, quick and quick city. The builder.io quick package is all about the component related parts and the build optimizer. Here you find members like the component factory, the use signal hook, and style hooks like use style scoped. Quick City, on the other hand, contains the server side focus parts of your Quick application. The package is called builder.io Quick City and it contains utilities for routing, endpoints, and form actions. Basically, you can think of Quick as a client side library like React, Angular, or Vue. This is not totally correct because Quick always requires a server side for streaming the JavaScript, but it's roughly the same category. Quick City is a meta framework like Next, Angular University, or Nuxt. Let's now have a look at resumability. The idea of resumability is that your application can start running and at some point of time a snapshot is taken from the application state. From this snapshot, the application execution can be continued within another environment. In Quick, the application starts on the server during SSR. When the initial rendering of a route is complete, a snapshot will be taken in form of an HTML document. This snapshot may not only include the rendered DOM representation. References to functions, so-called QRLs, are generated and saved together with the current state within the HTML document. So like in traditional SSR, the application can directly be rendered within the browser without executing any JavaScript. The important difference to traditional SSR is 
that there is no hydration taking place. This means that the application is not rendered a second time. Instead, a small JavaScript snippet is embedded into the HTML, which will use the QRLs to download the necessary JavaScript on demand. This is Quick's major advantage over other front-end frameworks. Let's now have a look at the fourth topic, routing and layout. Routing is part of Quick City. It implements directory-based routing as it is done in many other meta frameworks. The route directory contains all the pages, actions and endpoints of your Quick City application. Per route you can define an index.ts, index.tsx or index.mdx file. The directory path to one of those index files defines the route path. For example, a file routes block index.tsx would handle the route slash block. The default export of such an index file can be a quick component, which is the entry point for this page. Endpoints on those routes can be defined via on request or on HTTP method name. You can implement and export those to create a REST API or to change the response if you have a page defined by a default component within this index file. There is also a layout concept in Quick City. Layouts enable us to wrap underlying routes with shared content or behavior. They can be placed within any routing directory and they are available for the matching route or any subroute. A default layout can be defined in a layout.tsx file. Named layouts follow the naming layout-name.tsx and can be referenced by routes by naming them index at name.tsx. Layouts can define routing middleware and page layouts. Page layouts are components with a slot through which sub-layouts and the actual page can be slotted. Routing and layouts are quite complex topics and covering them in more detail within this video would be out of scope. You can read more about them in the quick documentation. Now it's time for the fifth topic, state management. Signals are a data structure which holds a value and can change this value at any time. It notifies subscribers whenever the value changes. I covered the signals concept in more detail in this video. In Quick, signals are the way to manage reactive state. You can create a signal with a use signal hook. The current value is stored in a value property. When a signal value is read during template rendering, this template part will be re-rendered whenever the value changes. Stores can be thought of as multi-signals. They are created via useStore and every property of this store acts like a value property of a signal. The next topic we want to cover are components. Quick components are, like modern React components, functions. What's different is that they should be wrapped with a component factory. This indicates to the Quick optimizer that it should generate a QRL and extract the function component into a separate module. We use JSX or TSX templating to render the components DOM. So if you are familiar to React, Preact or Solid, you should have a head start when learning quick. It will still take some time to get used to that every function property name has a trailing dollar sign. This will also mark those functions to be code splittable by the quick optimizer. Okay, let's finally talk about the seventh topic, which is tasks. If we want to trigger asynchronous operations in components, we can use tasks in Quick. Tasks are asynchronous, but they run sequentially before rendering. They can track signals or store values to re-execute on value change. There are the use task and the use visible task factories. The difference is that use task is executed at least one time on the server during SSR and use visible task 
is run the first time when the component becomes visible in the browser. Both factories provide a track and a cleanup function. With track we can control on which signal changes we want the task to be re-executed. Cleanup allows us to register a teardown handler for when the component gets unmounted. Keep in mind that we often can simply use listeners instead of tasks. Okay, we covered quite some topics in this video. This should give you a good head start in mastering quick. To keep an overview over those topics, you can download my sheet sheet. It's free. The link is in the description. In this sense, thanks for watching, never stop learning and see you in the next video.